I am Laurie Lee Barato and I am going to discuss about schistosomiasis. Schistosomiasis is a disease that is caused by parasites that enter humans by attaching to the skin, penetrating it, and then migrating through the venous system to the portal veins, where the parasites produce eggs and eventually the symptoms of acute or chronic disease. This disease is also known as biliarziasis, biliarzea, biliarziosis, and snail fever, or in the acute form, katayama fever. Theodore Villars identified the parasite Schistosoma hematobium in Egypt in 1851. Schistosomiasis is the second most prevalent tropical disease in the world. In the Philippines, currently there are 2,222 barangays, 189 municipalities and 28 provinces in the 11 regions endemic with Schistosoma japonica. Parasites of the genus Schistosoma cause the disease. The disease in humans is part of the complicated life cycle of the parasites. Humans enter freshwater areas that contain snails that grow schistosoma parasites that develop into free-swimming circuriae. The circuriae can attach to and penetrate the human skin, migrate to blood vessels, and through long blood capillaries reach the portal blood or vesicular blood systems. During the migration, the circuriae change and develop from schistosomula into male and female adult parasitic worms. The worms incorporate human proteins into their surface structures, so most humans produce little or no immune response to the parasites. After parasite mating occurs in the portal or vesicular blood system, egg production occurs. In contrast to the adult parasites, the parasites' eggs stimulate a strong immune response by most humans. Some egg migrates through the, the bowel or bladder tissue and tissue sites. Eggs shed into urine or feces may reach maturity in fresh water and complete their life cycle by infecting susceptible snails. In addition, some adult worms may migrate to other organs. This life cycle is further complicated by Schistosoma japonicum species that may also infect domesticated and wild animals which can then serve as another host system. Schistosoma hemotibium is the species that usually infects the human bladder tissue, while the other species usually infect the bowel tissue. The acute and chronic symptoms of schistosoma are thought to be mainly due to the egg migration through tissue and the human immune response to the eggs. Chronic symptoms are mainly due to eggs that are not shed from the body. Complications related to the disease are thought to occur due to long-term exposure to the highly antigenic eggs. Although a few patients may have minor skin irritation, when the circuitry enter to the skin, most people do not develop symptoms until the eggs develop. Then fever, chills, cough, and muscle aches then begin within one to two months of infection. However, most people have no symptoms at this early phase of infection. Unfortunately, a few patients develop acute schistosomiasis during one to two month period and their symptoms resemble those for serum sickness and are as follows. Fever, abdominal pain, blood in the stools, cough, malaise, headache, rash, and body aches. The majority of people who develop chronic schistosomiasis have symptoms develop months or years after the initial exposure to the parasites. The following is a list of most symptoms associated with chronic schistosomiasis. Abdominal pain, abdominal swelling or ascites, blood in the urine, and painful urination, shortness of breath and coughing, weakness, chest pain and palpitations, seizure, paralysis, mental status change, lesions on the vulva or the perineal area. Blood tests and more recently polymerase chain reaction tests can help confirm the diagnosis, but positive results may only indicate past exposure. However, these tests are not usually positive until the patient has been infected for about 6 to 8 weeks because it takes time for the eggs to develop and stimulate the human immune response. Thus, the PCR test is available from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Currently, the drug used in most people is Praziquantel or Biotricide. However, it only is effective against adult worms and does not affect eggs or immature worms. Treatment with this drug is simple. Dose is based on the patient's weight with two doses given on one day. However, the drug causes rapid disintegration of the worm which, in return, allows the human immune system to attack the parasite. This immune response can cause localized reactions which may increase the patient's symptoms. Corticosteroids are often used to deduce the symptoms of this reaction. Unfortunately, this response limits the use of Praziquantel. 
people associated with freshwater sources in areas where schistosoma are endemic should seek medical care if they develop symptoms of acute schistosomiasis. Those with diagnosed chronic schistosomiasis should seek medical care if their chronic symptoms increase. Anyone with undiagnosed schistosomiasis who develops symptoms listed above should seek medical care and inform the caregivers what they have been exposed to freshwater resources in areas where the disease is endemic either as residents of the areas or as a tourist. The complications that may develop with schistosomiasis usually occur in, in individuals harboring many parasites and eggs, especially when the egg and parasites have migrated to other organs. In general, complications usually involve the cardiopulmonary, CNS, gastrointestinal, and urinary tract, along with the liver and spleen. Some of the major complications are hypertension, seizures, bacterial infections, urinary obstruction, organ damage or destruction, and death. Theoretically, the disease can be prevented by avoiding all human skin contact with freshwater sources where schistosomiasis and the snails that complete their life cycle are endemic. However, this is unlikely to occur in most developing countries. Reports of attempts to decrease or eliminate snails from some freshwater sources using molucicides have reported a decrease in the number of people infected, but this often requires repeat treatments, and some efforts have been stopped because of limited success. Unfortunately, people who are treated and have no symptoms of the disease can easily become reinfected if exposed to the xerxeria. The human the immune response to this disease often is not able to prevent reinfection. There is no commercially available vaccine against schistosoma, but research is ongoing and perhaps in a few years, a vaccine may be available. That's all. Thank you.